Okay. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is Shikak. Um, I'll be showing you guys the color mapping feature that will be available in R73 release. Okay. So I want to touch base on what are the benefits of color mapping. Uh, why do we want to use color mapping? First of all, we have uh, color map shading. Um, you can see the variation in the assembly process when it's built. Uh, you can see the variation of part geometry uh, for the effects of tolerances. And you can also evaluate locating schemes for different uh, or for the tooling processes. And we have color map lines. With color map lines, you can um, see a visual representation of all your measurements, uh, find the critical measurements, perform some root cause analysis, and also multi uh, compare multiple data sets so you can find, again, the critical measurements and do some analysis on that, too. So we have um, two methods of uh, color mapping. First of all, I want to start off with uh, assembly variation. Basically, um, if, you, if you look on the bottom right-hand corner of this, um, this model here, it's just a simple tail fin model. Um, I chose to color map the two sections of the fuselage. Basically, um, as, it builds, as it goes through the build, it's showing you the variation. Um, it's color mapping based on the deviation from the nominal position. So right here, between the two sections, you'll see some red, uh, red some blue. And um, yeah, so you can kind of analyze what's, you know, where are your trouble areas. Um, this doesn't take into consideration your DCS points or features, so it's not required. Um, like I said, I chose the two sections of this, uh, this model here. So you can choose what you want to color map, be it the uh, tail fin or one section of the fuselage or just the whole model. So any model you have, you can color map whatever you want. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be showing you guys uh, a video of how to do this, going through the clicks and everything. So the second one I want to show is uh, part variation. Basically, let's say you have a model with DCS points and features. Um, and you want to you wanna color map based on those and see the effects of tolerances. Um, if you look at the top right-hand corner, you'll see this the hood of the, uh, the model, and you'll see that we have DCS points and some tolerances. You'll see some patches of color mapping going on. Um, again, the, 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 red, the red areas obviously show the most variation, and the blue areas is where it's close to the nominal. And you can do some uh, part, vari part variation validation in the separated position. This is all in the separated. It's not built. So you can see how the geometry of the uh, part is moving. Okay, so that's that's it on uh, color map shading. Again, I'll show you guys the video in a little bit on how to do that. Um, I want to touch base on the color map lines. Basically, it's a uh, it's a visual representation of all your measures that you have in your model. So, for for example, for this one here, you have uh, a glance of all the measures, flush flush measures, point measures, or gap measures. Um, so I, what happens is after you run a simulation, you'll see all the measures, and you can look at them from a six standard deviation view or a PPK value or a percent out of spec. So this, so this really gives you just a statistical output analysis. Um, <clears throat> again, you can pinpoint the critical measures, um, perform some root cause analysis, find the trouble areas, and uh, fix the design, and also you can like I said, you can choose a statistic type. Currently, we only have uh, percent out of spec, PPK, and six standard deviation. So first one we're going to look at is percent out of spec. As you can see, um, the 31.82 value here is corresponding to the red area, which is the only one that's out of spec if you look at the percent out of spec only. The next one. If we look at the six standard deviation, we'll see like we'll see a, a lot of measures. We won't only see the one that was percent out of spec, but we'll be able to see which one has caused the most trouble, which one is the most um, variation, which and uh, it's also represented inside the uh, legend. And then we also have our PPK values. Um, you'll see that this line here is the most critical. And the 5.39 is 
represented inside the legend. Obviously, so what I did forget to mention is that the lines, the length of the lines kind of represent the most critical measures. And it's the same thing as the color. So your blue areas will not be that much variation, but the red areas will be a lot of variation, which you should be focusing on. Also, um, one of the greatest things about this, uh, about the lines, is you can run multiple simulations and see um, see the effect of uh, see see different measures and how uh, your different data sets are are affect the uh, lines. So as you can see over here on the bottom uh, the bottom histogram here, I ran about 2,000 samples. At the top one, I ran 10,000 samples. Obviously, it's going to give me different statistical values. So I can take a glance at percent of spec and stick standard and uh, the, the PPK values for those. It allows you to very quickly visually identify changes between iterations of right. my model. So exactly. if I want to try out a new scenario or a new spec or I'm working on something, it uses a quick way to visually identify what the changes are to my, to my design. Right, exactly. And I'll show you guys this in the video as well. So let me uh, pull up the, well, actually not going to be a video. I'm just going to show you guys how to uh, perform the color mapping. So, so let's start. Let's start with uh, assembly variation. Um, I want to. I want to. I want to see the variation when it's built. Uh, so I'll, I'll go into preferences. We'll, you'll see in the seventh year release that we have a new color map uh, tab inside the preferences. I want to make sure the color map shading is checked on and the mesh position base is checked on. So this is um, so mesh position based uh, option. Basically, it, you can use it for assembly variation, and the point projection base you can use it for a separated position or if you want to look at a part part variation or geometry how it's changing. So we'll, we'll choose the first one for now. Um, Again, you can uh, show the legend here. So I'll, I'll knock it over to the left-hand side. It's very customizable. So you put it anywhere, and then um, you can change the font or the box sizes. So I'll just leave it at that. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and uh, nominal build. Let's zoom into a part a little bit. And then uh, <clears throat> for this model, I, I think I chose the uh, two sections and the tail fin to, uh, to color map. So you can see that as the, as the part moves, deviates from the nominal position, it, it'll color map based on the max percentage of the uh, deviation. So the red areas will be obviously the 93% here in the legend, and the blue areas will be the 7.75 or lower. So yeah, as it builds, you can see where the trouble areas are. So that's it for uh, assembly variation. And then let's go ahead and show you guys the part variation. So we want to go into preferences and um, choose the point projection base. So basically it's taking the DCS points and your analysis mesh and projecting them onto the CAD surface. So that's why it's called point projection. Um, in the mesh position base, it doesn't take into consideration your DCS points or your analysis mesh. So in the separated position, I want to see um, the effect of, let's, let's say I want to see the effect of or the feature tolerance on, on the surface of this tail fin. So I'm not going to build it, but I'll, I'll go to deviate. And I can see how the geometry of the, uh, the surface is, is deviating. And I just want to show you guys how like it, it supports the feature tolerances and any DCS analysis mesh. And I think over here on the top corner we have some DCS points. I'm not sure if you guys are able to see it. Should be one here and uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay, you can't you guys can't really see it that good, but there's about four of them there. And so if I deviate it, you'll see that the uh, 
if, when the points are moving, it'll show red areas, uh, just like just like what I showed in the feature tolerance. So it's pretty similar. Um, like I said, this method uh, takes into consideration your DCS entities. So that's how you would uh, perform some color map shading on your model. And uh, I want to show you guys the color map lines. So let's see. I'm going to run a sample of 2,000. So this is about 2,000 samples here. Um, you can see that when I'm looking at, so I, I got some options here to set for the color map lines. So if I set to percent out of spec, um, I can see that there's one measure that's very critical. Um, I'm sure there's other measures, but you just can't see them, so they're they're not. You should not be as focused on those. You can also set the thickness of the line. You see it more clear. And you can perform color map shading while you do the color lines. But I'm going to turn off the color map shading so you can see where the measure is coming from. I think this is the flush measure. So that's the percent out of spec. And let's say I wanted to look at the standard deviation uh, values. So I, now, that, now I see a lot more measures when I look at these uh, six standard um, uh, values. So quickly, I, I can tell that this measure here is uh, is where my trouble area is, where my uh, most variation is, probably followed by this one here on the left hand side, and a couple more orange ones. And if I look at PPK values. We see that lines change instantly, and right now, this line here on the uh, on the right is the most critical. What's your smallest PPK value? The smallest one, like in the back, there. would be the blue ones here. Um, yeah, it, it's it's pretty dark blue. Over, I I want to say the the on the left hand side where you see those two ones. And again, if if you change the um, if you, as you go through the measures, it'll highlight which measure you're looking at. So that's pretty helpful in uh, finding your critical and non-critical measures. I can quickly visually identify where my problem areas are. I can scroll through those measurements and just focus on those areas. Right. Yep. So yeah, with with the options here, you can set your type and your line thickness. You can turn on the color mapping there. You can turn it off if you want. Okay. So let's say I want to run um, 2,000 uh, 2,000 samples, but I want to. I'm just going to exaggerate the uh, tolerance magnitude scale just for demonstration purpose. So I want to put it up to three here, and then run another uh, simulation. I got two, two yeah. simulations open. Um, let's take a look at the uh, second measure. So you'll see that the the first one that I ran, when we're looking at PPK values here, um, I'm sorry. Let's look at uh, percent out of spec here. So you'll see that this uh, the the critical measure is highlighted in red, and you'll see that if I click on the first simulation, it gives me a 31.7 in the red area. And as I click on the second one, it changed automatically or it changed right away. So it, it actually it's actually giving me more lines now, but these are not as 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 um, 
as critical as the uh, the red one here, but it did change lines. So as you move through, if you, as you switch through the uh, through simulations, it'll it'll change by itself. And the same thing with the six standard. If I choose the first one, and if I choose the second one, it'll um, it'll change the lines. And same thing with the PPK values. So yes, um, you can run different data sets. I mean, not even just two. You can run multiple ones and switch back and forth just to see the effect of, like I said, I exaggerated the, um, the mag uh, tolerance magnitude. So you can run more samples and see the effect on that. 